Okay, so this is a Dragon Frame walkthrough tutorial. Uh, Dragon Frame is an animation software that I use and that a lot of big uh, animation studios like uh, Ardman and the guys that did Coraline and Paranorman and I think Box Trolls and all that stuff, that's all done in Dragon Frame. I think this was $300, so for professional software, this is pretty damn cheap. I uh, When I do animations, uh, all of the animation for uh, one video will be in one of these scene folders and whenever I do a new shot I do a new take so I'm gonna open take 2 which has nothing in it I like doing that because then if I want to change something like uh, like go back and 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 reanimate something or make a new take I can just go switch take and then I can if I want to do a new shot I just go new take and it's just like one click and then everything is all in one folder so that that's really convenient for me so the first thing you'll see here is I've got my Canon T2i or 550D hooked up to the live view here. Uh, as you can see, I can move my hands in front of there. I'm setting up for a nighttime shot, which the lighting isn't perfect for, but what I've got here is just a big soft box. Let's see if I can show you that on the preview screen. It's just a big uh, soft box light above the set, uh, which is providing my lighting. So it just gives everything this white highlight along the top. Since I got these soft boxes, I think there's been a major improvement in how my videos look, so I highly recommend them. They're really good. Okay, so his face is a bit dark there, so I'll just... I took this out for a second before. I'm going to add it back in to show you. I've just got a piece of white paper here. It's actually a business card that I have spare. And I'm going to stick that underneath him, and it'll just brighten up. So that's without, with... So you can see his face a bit better there and he stands out against the background a bit better. Now I'm going to have a look at my camera settings. And down here in the bottom right corner, you've got your shutter speed, which is how long the shutter in your camera is open for. Uh, the longer it is, the more light will be let in. Your aperture, which is how wide the circle on your camera lens is, that, that actually lets in light. Aperture, the higher it is, the less light is let in, but also the more things that will be in focus. I'll demonstrate that to you in a, in a moment. And down here is the bottom is the ISO, which is also controlling brightness, but what it isn't actually adjusting settings. This is actually more to do with the way the camera processes it. So the higher your ISO, the more noisy it's going to be. So generally you want to stick that down as low as you can. I usually sit around the 200, 400 range, so I don't get much of that ugly multicolored noise. And below all that stuff you have your, your processing uh, or your settings here. My Your picture style is basically colors so you can set that to all this different stuff. I usually set it to one that I've created myself which is similar to a picture style you can download called Cine Style, which just uh, lowers the contrast and the sharpness from your standard thing. So you're actually doing as little processing as possible in camera so you have more uh, information to work with. If you look at this, this image is kind of flat and grey and foggy and what I'll do is I'll actually up the contrast in my editing program and to make it look a bit nicer. But because I, I have that low contrast style I get more, I can you can see more, so you can see in the shadows and in the bright areas. That's part of what makes things look really cinematic. Down here I'm just doing a large, large normal JPEG? Anyway, I'm, I'm just doing a large JPEG. I could do a better thing like RAW or something, but really when I'm shooting in 5K there's, there's not really a whole lot of quality lost. Oop. Oh yeah, and occasionally my camera will, if I don't leave it there it'll turn off automatically. Down here you've got your white balance, which is, is basically what color white is in your picture. So here, if I just press 3 on my numpad, It'll put that back. So if you look here, that's if I change my white balance, it'll make the white a different color. White balance works from cool to warm. Cool being more blue colors, like a like a fluorescent light bulb, to really warm colors being like the sun, which is yellow. Just make sure it's not auto. As long as it's something consistent that doesn't change, you can always change it in your editing program. I usually leave it on fluorescent or tungsten just because because these soft boxes are really blue sort of light. If I just turn on my lamp, it's got a more yellow sort of light. And so that that gives me my nice sort of warm feeling is that contrast between the yellow lamp and the and the blue soft box. But I'm just gonna leave the soft box on for now. So that's the uh, the camera settings. 
And I'll just demonstrate to you what Aperture does, and also the, the preview images, well, the, uh, the high quality preview mode in Dragon Frame. So if I just take a picture here by pressing enter on my numpad, I can scroll back between the live view, which is this one, and, and the picture that I just took uh, using the, nu the number one and two on my numpad. You can see that's, that's me reflected in the tree there and on his face. That's always a problem in my animations. And, I get flickers. They look the same, more or less. What we're looking at now is actually called the video preview. And if I hold down the the full stop on my numpad, or the, the dot, you'll now notice that between the pictures that you've taken, and if I take another picture it'll also have this, and the live preview, the pictures that I've taken in high quality preview mode are actually, they have a lot more in focus. And that's because the aperture in the settings is actually set quite high. If you set it even higher, well actually, what you should do is if you want to set your aperture higher, grab the line between the aperture and the frames and it'll slide them along and keep your exposure constant so you don't get things being darker or brighter. So if I adjust the aperture up even higher and look at the high quality preview, you'll notice even more stuff is in focus. I don't think I adjusted that, that exposure right, because that's a lot darker than that. But whatever, if I turn off the preview, we'll just go back to, to having everything out of focus. And that's because in your video preview mode, uh, which is your live view, it's just the aperture is always really low in that for some reason, and you've got a lot more stuff out of focus. You've got a shallower depth of field, is what it's called. So if you want to accurately know what you're actually shooting, you want to every now and then check your high preview or high resolution preview mode to have a look at what your pictures will actually look like when you import them back into your editing program. But generally, you'll want to animate using the video assist just because it's consistent. So I've already got some audio imported using the audio tab. I just press this button here and, uh, and pick my audio. And you can already see the audio waveforms down here on the side. And so as I as I take pictures, uh, I can work out where I am in the animation relative to when my characters are talking. The animation here looks really janky, but I'm just going to leave that because I'm just going to show you how to do this. First thing I'm going to do is press plus on the numpad and that creates some onion skinning. You might have seen that this move down here. And what that does is just shows you an after image of the last picture. So now if I move him around like that. Now I'm just gonna animate him really roughly to this dialogue. It's probably not gonna look good at all. What the dialogue here is, he's saying that sounds awesome. So I'm just gonna have him do a little hop it's going to look rubbish, but whatever. I can't really talk and animate at the same time very well. And you can see in the the audio waveform on the right, the little ones, that's him saying that sounds. And then when he gets to about frame 12, he says awesome. And you can see it gets really loud. And I've just scrolled back and forth to get an idea of the timing there. So now I'm just going to have him stay on the ground for a couple of frames. Uh, by the way, that pop-up happens if you press enter too fast uh, and try to take a picture while it's already taking a picture. So now he's going to say awesome, so I'm just going to have him hop up. Might actually try and make this one look alright. Uh, ease in, so slow movement at first, then go fast. If I can. And then I'll just move him just a tiny bit. Uh, generally, when I do these sort of movements, I don't always make them straight up and down. I generally nudge him uh, at the top of his jump. I'll nudge him to the side a little bit. Just because that kind of roundabout movement makes the animation feel a bit more fluid uh, sometimes. It's not always the case, but uh, generally when I'm animating Nico like this, uh, it helps to have him move around side to side. Now often I'll start posing the figure before the picture's even finished processing just because I want to I want to keep moving as fast as I can because I don't want to spend my entire life playing with Lego. Now when he gets to the bottom here I'm just going to make his head jiggle back for one frame and that gives him uh, like that that little bit of extra energy I think. Okay so I've taken my last picture 
And I'm just going to press zero on the numpad. That sounds to awesome. That? That sounds awesome. Yep. And you'll notice his head jiggles back for that one last frame. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to stretch out the last image in my animation for about five frames. And then I'm going to go File, uh, and then Conform Current Take. And what that'll do is it'll turn all of those into individual pictures. It'll also get rid of any deleted pictures that you've, that you've had, um, and number all of your pictures accordingly, so you can easily import them into your editing programs as uh, animated files. I, I could export this as a QuickTime movie. I generally don't because that uh, reduces the quality. What I generally do instead is I'll go File, Oh, I got an email. Go File, Import, Media, and then I'll uh, go Open Sequence. Uh, actually, I should show you, this is in the in the Dragon Frame folder. You go to the take that you're using, then you go to uh, the X1 folder. That's where all the high quality 12 megapixel or whatever pictures that you're taking. I think there's uh, 18 megapixels. Yeah, so I'll go Open Sequence. Because I was animating in 15 frames per second, I'm going to set that to 15 frames per second. So he is animated properly. And then I'll import that there. Uh, no, I don't want to set the settings based on that. And then if we look at that, he is animated there. And the it looks like rubbish, but whatever. I, I'd actually set that up properly if this was actually going to be in the animation. If I drag the proper audio that there... That sounds awesome! It's now lined up. That sounds awesome. I'll just quickly whack on my uh, my mask. That sounds awesome. Now, I don't usually edit my video in Sony Vegas anymore. I usually do that in Premiere Pro. But uh, just for the purposes of this tutorial, and because I'm showing it to Chris in particular uh, from Mini Life TV, I just wanted to show you in Sony Vegas. If I'm doing a 24-hour animation competition, I use Sony Vegas because I'm still much faster with it, because uh, I have more experience. It's not quite as high-end as Adobe, I think, but it's got generally most of the same features. Uh, just I like Adobe because uh, you can use After Effects with it. I'm going to go to Switches and go Disable Resample, and that'll get rid of something called Interpolation, which Sony Vegas always puts on every single video file that you drag in for some reason. I don't know why, when you when you have movements in your video, it'll fill in the frames in between them, and it just makes it look all muddy and like garbage, and I don't know why they do that. Always right-click, go Switches and Disable Resample on all of your videos. Use this uh, Selection Edit tool to select all of your video clips and do that. And I think there are a couple of things I missed. Down here, you can select your, your aspect ratio mask. You can make a custom one if you want to. I'm using 2.39 to 1. And then up here, you can use this slider to cut that off. I usually animate with the slider all the way up, uh, just because I know I'm going to cut off the top and bottom. Or well, sometimes I'll just show a little bit of the, the uh, those things. I'll also have this grid here which I've got set to uh, two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. So it gives me some markers to use to compose my shots in a way called the rule of thirds, which you can look up. It is a basic composition rule of thumb. Uh, generally, you want to keep your character's eyes on one of these points, but I totally forgot to do that this time. Whatever. <laughs> this is, uh, by the way, this is the second time I did this video, because originally... I was doing the video and I had a had a webcam in the bottom right corner. That's about it. Thank you for watching and Chris, I hope that helps. Please ask questions in the comment section if there's anything you want to know about. This has been Thomas Evans, also known as Fallen Creature, and thank you for watching.